So now I kind of wanted to show a little bit about uh, writing Go. Um, and some of the things I really like about it. So the first thing is someone asked me how space dependent is Go. Um, is that visible? Mm -hmm. Is that pretty good? OK. Uh, so let's see. Here I'm just in some test code that I wrote. Um, You'll see if I write new code, like um, I want to make an array of ints, if I can type. Did you see how I saved and it got formatted? Go always looks the exact same. There's no arguments about what Go looks like because Go or get formatted correctly. You see, if I mess up here, there's an error that says, hey, on this line, I don't know if you guys can see that, but down at the bottom, it tells me the like, errors and stuff. Is there a question about that? So that's, that's an interesting thing, too. Um, Go always looks the same. Go comes with a lot of tools. So I can say something like uh, go test. And what it is, is it's running tests over all my packets. So here I have a file named kernel underscore test. These are like those build rules I told you about. Uh, it could have been underscore x86. And then if I said go build x86, that file would have got built. Um, but now I'm telling it to build the test files. And it's going to go through and run all these tests. Go comes with built-in testing, uh, kind of like Gmock, kind of is C++, except it's built-in. So you can test privates. It has built-in support for it. Some of that support. Um, like here, I'm testing how much of each function am I, that I, is covered. So you see some functions are 100% tested. Others are only like 75. One is 0% tested. Um, if I wanted to actually look at that function to see what it was, this brings up an HTML display of all of the code. And you see red is not tested. So I haven't tested errors in this. Uh, you see my serialization code. Again, I don't test the errors. But all the green is tested. And here I don't test serialization for something. So that's built-in support of uh, what's tested. There's built-in support for race detection, which is a threading problem. There's built-in support for profiling. So you can see how fast things are running, how much time each thing is taking up in a thread, in a core. Go comes with a lot of built-in support. Another thing I really like about Go, uh, I don't think I have internet here, actually, now I think about it. Um, but I built these things locally, so it should be fun. Another thing I like about Go is that it, uh, it's easy to document. So here, I don't know. OK, well, let me. Well, I'm just going to build it locally right quick. So it's kind of hard to tell because that's probably really small. But with Go, you can build all the document from all the code yourself locally on your machine. You don't need the internet to do anything. Um, so I just did that. And now you go, I can look and see my code. I'm actually going to look at documentation for it. So here's GitHub, my stuff. And I'm going to go and look at core, uh, kernel. And my code comes, this is code I wrote myself. And it comes with an overview of it, some examples of what it's like to use the core for my game engine, uh, what it's like to use messaging in my game engine, and what it's like to serialize in my game engine. And this isn't something I did myself personally. This got built out from my comments that were already in my code. Um, the example is you have to do something kind of special. Um, you just make a function in a test file called example, what you want it to be, and it gets generated automatically. And then Go comes with rules for how to output that, how to display that. 
Um, same thing for documentation. You'll see if I open up I have a comment on top of the package thing here. And when we go back to oh. kernel, it's the same message here. Uh, when we look at some functions, which I probably don't comment functions as well as I should. Don't tell me. Um, let's see. I have a few functions. So you see core is common. It. So now you can see core. You can see the exported data. Everything is clickable, so you can go to like all the objects. And you can even go into the source code, and you see the comments there. Um, there's more you can do. You can also do static analysis. Uh, it's really, really, really cool, all the power that comes in this language. And that's what I'm saying. There's new languages that aren't C++. Uh, C Sharp does a lot of the same kind of things. Um, D, I haven't used it, but I've heard good things about it. So there's other options out there other than C++ that make programming a lot easier. Um, all right, so I'm going to get back to it. Oh, and the other thing I really, really like. Um, if we go to document packages, if we look at... Uh, the actual, these are the library packages, and they're all the same thing. They use the same exact things that I'm using to show off their code. You can find examples on everything by the standard library, and it's really great and really, really easy to learn. Okay. So, uh, were there any questions on that stuff? Did you compile your code by saving it? Uh, no. Uh, so, when you were making the example, were you uh, formatted it weirdly and you got an error? Oh, no. So, it, what it does is it runs uh, static analysis on it. So, it's a plugin in Sublime. Uh, so, Go is tool based, which means it's easy to make editor plugins for it. So, this is a, a plugin called Sublime Go that does that. And it does a lot of other cool things. Like, it can bring up a command window to run things in. So, then I can say things like Go Build, and enter Go and Build it. Uh, so when I was making the examples for this, um, if we look at like the coding examples, <coughs> I do something like uh, I'm actually not sure why they didn't. Oh, there it goes because it's so big. <laughs> so I say like go run Plunk type system. Oh, did I? Yeah. And then that ran it. So that's how I made all the examples. I actually made them this afternoon. Um, but it's just really easy to code and go, so it wasn't like a huge deal. Um, some other things that make this really easy is like, I can, I gotta make this a little bit smaller. No. Um, I can say something like, I can just press a keyboard combination to add or delete packages. Um, and then use them. So if I wanted to add flags, now if I go look up top, flag is there. If I wanted to delete it, a flag is gone. Uh, so coding is really, really fast in this language. Yep. I was just curious. Um, you said that there's a lot of plugins for this. Is there anything like Python tools, but for you know? I don't know what uh, Python tools are. Oh, so Microsoft actually put out this package called Python Tools for Visual Studio, so you can actually run Python stuff. Is there anything like that for Go for Visual Studio? Not for Visual Studio, no. Um, there are some editor plugins. Uh, if you go to the wiki, which I linked at the back there, it'll say like editor support or plugin editor plugins, and they have a whole bunch of different ones. So Sublime is one of them. I just like Sublime. Um, there's some actually really cool editors, and there's a couple of debuggers, but I don't really use them very often. Uh, what I've found is that <coughs> since it's so easy to test code in here, you don't run into as many problems as you might where you need a debugger. Um, is there any other questions? Um, you keep saying that Go is a tool-based language. Can you define what makes language tool-based? Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Um, so here, um, let's see. I'm just going to say Go, and I can say Go Vet. And that's Go is the command that I use to compile it. Go Vet just checked to see if I had any problems here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new line at the end of this code here. Um, <coughs> I didn't check that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But um, if I say like go help. You see the go command and you see all the different tools you can run through there. And they're always adding new tools. So one of the ones that's my favorite is, well, format. Every time I save, it formats my code. So I don't have to worry about it. And it all looks like it should look. Um, but go fix, anytime they make a new version, you can just run go fix and it'll make all the things that aren't backwards compatible, it'll update them for you. Go testing, where I showed you that HTML thing or where I ran the test over my code, that was another tool. Um, same thing for run, that kind of, it's different than build. Run or actually run it, and you can see the output right away. Build or just compile it. Um, those are all tools. Uh, so what I mean is they have a big infrastructure around more than just compiling the language. Um, are these tools like just available as in you can use them without having to go get them from anywhere or do anything, or you have to go get them from somewhere so you have access to them? These all come standard. The one I use for this presentation is called Present. Um, you have to get that one, and I'm not sure about GoDoc, the one that I used to show you guys the code examples, um, but it's really easy. They store them all in one place, and then you use the get command to download it, uh, but you need an internet connection for that. Yeah. Um, what's really cool is like you can use Go list, and you can see all the imports of the package, and then that uses regular expression to find certain ones if you want. So I can find all the ones from GitHub. Uh, yes? Uh, yeah, I'm guessing you can write your I don't know. I've never looked at it right in the tool. Um, all the tools here are in, C, are in Go. Um, parts of Go, when they first wrote the compiler, Go didn't exist, so they wrote it in C, C++. Uh, but they're rewriting it all now in Go. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be Go. Yep? Oh, good question. So Go is designed for those kind of problems. So what it does is it, everything is a static lib. That means their binaries are bigger, but they come with the runtime. And if you have a Go executable for a certain architecture, like x86, it's going to run. You don't have to have anything else. You just put it on someone's computer, it'll work, if it's for that architecture. So it's really, really, really smart language. It's designed for problems like that. Is there anything else? Okay.